Hey folks, we're at the Microsoft Remote Learning Webinar. This is Mike Falson from the Microsoft Education Team, and we're going to be going today and talking with Dr. David Kellerman from the University of New South. We'll start with the latest news and updates, and normally we have two different guests on our show, but today, because the quote legendary, as I like to call him, Dr. David Kellerman, he gets both spots. And so he's going to be going through all the great things that he's doing down there in the University of New South Wales. It is 9 a.m. tomorrow over there from where we are. It's 3 p.m. Pacific time. So we'll just review the quick links to get started. First, we've got the Microsoft EDU remote learning site. There's the Teams Education Quick Start Guide that we've recently updated and we've improved. And it's in multiple languages. And this encouraged people to join our remote learning community. That's the place where we have thousands of educators from all around the world collaborating in a PLN, learning from each other. The Microsoft team is in there, engineers, product team members helping out. And that's where we started these webinars and we've made these webinars public now and global. So for today's updates, I actually pulled back. If you haven't seen uh, David Kellerman's demo, from uh, Inspire, that was, I think it was last fall. Really amazing demo. He was actually on stage with the Microsoft CEO, Satya Nadella, and he showed some pretty incredible things. You'll probably see some of those today. We also have a brand new Teams EDU support guide that has pivots by both educator or student. So we've just added the student pivot. So if you have these support guides that are really helpful for getting up and running, you can now pivot if you're a teacher, or you can also look at it if you're a student. And then also on the student front, we just launched a brand new playlist on YouTube. So on the Microsoft Education channel on YouTube, there's a new student videos playlist that has a bunch of short little quick tip videos that are designed for students. A lot of our stuff been for educators in the past, and now we're getting more and more student content up there. So check out that playlist. Without further ado, and I'm going to unshare my screen here, we've got Dr. David Kellerman at the University of New South Wales. Follow him on Twitter if you aren't already. And uh, I've been working with David for a couple of years now. I think he started out as a OneNote master, but now he's morphed into a full scale Teams master. And he's going to show some of the great stuff that he's been doing down there in Australia. So David, with that, I'm going to unshare my screen and we're going to pop you live. Oh, and David, you'll need to unmute also. G'day, Mike. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, and thank you, everyone who's joining or listening after the fact. Um, as you mentioned, here in Australia, we are living in the future. <laughs> it is 9 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and I would also like to say I've had the pleasure of working with Mike for a while now. I think the first time we probably communicated was by email in 2017 when I was doing some cool stuff with OneNote class notebook, trying to use it to run live digital ink examinations. Um, and since then, I've been working with the EDU team on all kinds of projects, pushing the product as it stands and, and begging for more really cool features, which the team have been awesome uh, in delivering. So just wondering what format we want to go today, Mike. I, I, I really like the kind of conversational style here. I don't want to just give a uh, presentation. As you pointed out, there are a few recordings of different kinds of presentations. What I really wanted to do today was actually go a little bit back to basics. We don't need to talk about AI and machine learning and augmented reality. But the really important thing at the moment is how do you get the basics right when you're trying to convert classes over to not only to teams but you know what i would call a digitally authentic mode and one of the yeah, problems I think we're great, seeing is, is a lot of this yeah. like iron horse approach which is you take everything exactly the way you're completely used to doing it and just try and make it work on the internet like we're seeing teachers who are just doing one hour conference calls for their entire class 
which is essentially just trying to do what they always do without moving over and, and looking at all of the amazing benefits that we get when we can do something a little bit more digitally authentic. Yeah, I think that sounds great. So yeah, if you want to just go through that, what you just talked about, we don't need the, the, the advanced AI, which we know you can do well. I think you know, walking through, there's a lot of people out there who are just getting up and running, and especially maybe with a spin for higher education, since we've had more K-12 on here, uh, I think you're one of our first higher ed experts. So yeah, and if you want to share your screen and if you want to demo things, we can definitely take a look and see what you're doing as you walk us through it. And I'll jump in here and there too, just to, to if there's anything interesting that we, we talk about. Unreal. So I am now showing my desktop. I hope everyone can see here and I'm in Teams and we're looking at one of my classes. Now, this particular class is Eng 2400. This is the mechanics of solids. Um, it's a second year course. And and here is the inevitable interruption by a six year old. Hume. OK, I've been working really hard. OK, my five year old's been working really hard. He's building hey, up hey. all of the lander, which is coming along well. OK, Bubby, I'm going to start the next leg. Thank you, my friend. Good but work. I can't find that other flat, flat. OK, well, you keep working on it. <laughs> so. So this is a really big class. I've, I've actually got in this class about almost 600 students, maybe 550 students. So we're really talking about education at scale. That's not the only thing I do. I've got classes with your typical 30, 35 students as well. But the basic model stays the same here, which is to do with how do we break up material? How do we organize things and how do we make it as easy as possible for the students? So the first thing that I want to show everybody here is the channels down the side. Now we're seeing a lot of teams happening these days that only have one single channel and the channel is general and it's the default and everything is happening there. Now we've got the opportunity to not only break the discussion up into different components, but also to talk about um, to talk about topics within a particular context as well. So you'll see here I've got a I've got a different week for every single um, I've got a different channel for every week of the semester and I teach new content on one through nine and every one of those weeks has got its curriculum and its topic broken up specifically into a package that we're going to start and we're going to finish in that week. And this is really important for more complex reasons and if Mike, as Mike said, uh, if you go and watch one of the talks like the one I gave at the Inspire conference, you'll see that I use these channels as silos or buckets for data that drive some of the AI and ML powered uh, personal learning experiences. So we get to the very beginning and we're here in posts and what I tell my students is any technical questions you have about beam bending, okay, and we're learning how to calculate the deflection of a beam here, you post in that channel. And if it's week seven and you're studying for a quiz about beam bending in week five, you post the question back there in the week five channel. So all the conversation is going to be about that. Now, the very first thing that you're going to notice is that there's an announcement right at the beginning here. It says week five beam bending. I've made a custom graphic. The graphic uses UNSW yellow. There's a diagram at the right in that graphic that shows off uh, some beam bending that's happening there. It's all done in UNSW colors as well. And the branding, the identity, the familiarity is put in there straight away. I've tagged all of my students, D Eng 2400 students, that's the whole team. You can see there are 589 members in that team. And not only is everyone gonna get a notification, but I've set the status of this to important. So this is going to get the attention of all of my students. It's going to pop up in their notifications. Okay, could you close Hume's door? All right, 
So the next thing is there's a quick summary here. These are the topics that we're going to talk about this week. We're really trying to make everything clear and we're trying to kick it off. So what do we see in our normal team? Well, I'll just show you through some of the tabs. Now files, we know we've got file storage for things specific to this particular group. And if I jump back over here to the general channel and we go into files, you're going to see there's a special folder here called class materials and that's got a little um, icon on it. And you see here it says read only for students. So if I put something in class materials, like for example, I've got a folder with all of the lecture slides for the whole course. They're all in one place. The students can get them. They can download all of those in one single go. I don't know if anyone's done an online degree and had to click 1700 times to download the slides from every page but it's all there in one place and the students can't oh access and the students oh and the students can't oh Bill, I'm, found... you really have to leave me alone right now Bobby okay I found the piece you were really looking for come on out of here okay the joy so of live of... webinars right this is good <laughs> yeah i know it's it's this is the joys of uh, having young children working from home um so you can see I've got all of my material there for the students and when we go back into one of those channels like let's say it's axial loading well I've got the slides for that week this is the powerpoint of the presentation that I might give in the lecture and the material is right there for the students now the next thing that we have which is one of my absolute favorite things is the class notebook and the class notebook is something that I've been using before Teams even existed. And in the class notebook, you can see here, here's a problem. It's, let's say we're doing a lecture right now. I open up that particular problem and I'm going to solve that problem live. And so I've got my pens here. I've got my, my digital ink. And you can see here that I'm going to do those solutions live with all of my students in real time. And when I do this solution, we're having a conversation. And so the students are giving their feedback. They're helping me solve the problem. And on the left here, you'll see that there are 600 students here. So Ooh. these students are actually co-owners of the class notebook. And uh, I've actually really had great performance out of all of this. With this many students, I am careful not to distribute large files because it's a good way to bring your server Thank down you. to its knees. Point thanks you also. <laughs> yes, um, it is a good to have a bit of an idea of how things work. And you can see here we're drawing. There's a few really subtle things that I want to point out here to educators who are using digital ink. Let's take, for example, here's a diagram of a beam. There's an eight kilonewton load with a downwards arrow. OK, I've drawn a diagram and I've drawn this arrow in red and I've written eight kilonewtons. And now over here, I've done a moment equation and I've written mx is equal to 6x minus 8. And can you see here how the 8 that I've drawn right there is in red? And as I go through these calculations, I'm going to use colors to relate to things in the diagram and really help with communication. And so you can see here we get finally to our beautiful answer. And we've worked out not only how much the beam deflects, but we've got a function for the way that it's actually going to deflect. And this is really authentic because we've created this together. The students are co-owned. We're not just reading from a script. So maybe for a sec here, we could jump over to- Question on to that, David. Real yeah. quick, can I ask a question yeah. or actually make a comment? So back to the class notebook you were showing. And you and I have talked about this. You have, uh, you put this in the collaboration space and you typically will lock this in terms of students being able to edit it, right? That's right. And so I want to throw out something that, you know, this is we're we're theorizing right now, David. This is there's no promises here, just so we're sure um, for anyone watching this later. But David and I talked and David, wouldn't wouldn't it be wonderful if in the future I call this the Dr. David Kellerman feature? Wouldn't it be great if you could set automatically in Teams when you create a new channel, if it goes into the content library as read only, or if it goes into the collaboration space and the educator could control where that note section is auto-created, read only or read write? Yes, and that is an absolutely 
awesome idea because one thing I was just going to show you is if we're in week, let's say we're in beam deflection here in week eight, there's a default notes tab in a classroom team. And what you're going to see is that notes automatically maps over to the class notebook and it goes specifically to the beam deflection section in that notebook. Uh -huh. And that's why I use the collaboration space because I want to have that mapping. But obviously there is that potential problem that we can get, which is you're giving a lecture and students start drawing in the notebook that you're presenting from. And that's why I lock that down right now. So being able to put that in the content library for my situation would be a perfect feature. Yeah, so at some point in the future without promising a date, but not too far off, one might imagine that David Kellerman feature will magically appear. So stay tuned, everyone. Stay tuned indeed. And this is the kind of awesome collaboration that we love to have between Microsoft and, you know, the educators out there in the world. So when I'm doing an example like this, all right, I've, I've got a PowerPoint file. I still use PowerPoint files because we do have slides with lots and lots of mathematics laid out. It can be really cumbersome with a slide like this to write everything out live. And the students do want a nicely formatted reference for some of that basic theory. So we're here at step functions integration and I'm presenting to everybody here and I'm saying notice here this is the length and this is the step function. And you know this is the way that we might solve a particular problem. And then finally we go, let's do a worked example. And so when I get here, what I do is I take this worked example and I pin the worked example, let's say it's worked example one, and I pin the worked example, uh, I create a page within OneNote, I drop that PowerPoint slide, and then I right click and I go copy a link to page. And I go back over to my um, PowerPoint slide that I've created. And what I do in that PowerPoint slide is I put the link at the bottom. And so not only when the students are reviewing their slides, they can click that link and it'll take them to the actual notebook. But when I'm presenting, I say, now let's solve this problem. And I just tap that link and it goes directly to the exact specific point in the in the class notebook and you can see here the one I clicked is the actual example that we were working on. Now once I've finished that we finally get the solution. I swipe in from the right of my screen and I jump back into my PowerPoint and we keep talking about the theory. And so we're effectively doing a little bit of slick live production here, but we're trying to do things smoothly. We're trying to produce really nice videos that the students might watch after the fact. And so when I do class videos, we're doing a live event right now and I do live events in my classroom. I don't do conference calls. And one of the reasons why I don't do conference calls is just because the bandwidth is really, really heavy, especially, you know, you can imagine having hundreds and hundreds of people in a single meeting. You know, are you muting all of the students? Why are you even doing this? In fact, it turns out that the students are really happy to just ask questions in the chat. And I'm opening Teams over here right now, and you can see I've got the meeting chat window in the in on the right here, and people can ask their questions here and they can talk about it. And students are actually really happy to do this as well. Now, we can still do the classic conference call style meeting, but we don't want to bring the internet to its knees either. So we've got our team, we've got the slides pinned here. The slides have got links to the notebook here. The notebook files live in the SharePoint site. and We've aggregated everything in a really nice, neat way for those students to work. What about that live video I was telling you? Well, it's live produced as a live event and it goes to stream. And so if I go to the general channel, you'll see I've got a recordings tab here. And here you're going to see these are the lecture recordings. And let's suppose I'm going to click on one of these. Maybe we were just talking about beam deflection. So here it is in week eight. And one thing that you'll see is it's a live event. 
Okay, I'll just mute that. I've got my transcription that's happening automatically in stream. This is a huge accessibility feature. Look at that, closed captions on people who have got a hearing impairment or uh, any kind of accessibility issue, we've got a huge feature. And while I'm using this live notebook, you'll see there's me picture in picture at the bottom, but maybe earlier on when we're talking uh, about slides, we might have a a side by side view like this when we're talking about. It. I'm looking really surprised there. OK, and this is this is producing a, a really great experience for the students. We've got ink coming through. We can see all that visual communication. We've got accessibility features. They're able to communicate back, ask live questions and be involved in the generation of all of these notes and materials. And if I just jump out of this full screen for a moment and I'll pause this video, let's head over to Microsoft Stream. Now, we're in Office 365 and if we click the waffle menu, maybe you're in, in Outlook over there and there's Teams here and here's this nice little thing here called Stream, which is where I'm at right now. So how do we actually do this? Well, I've created a stream channel and the content of what's in this stream channel is restricted only to access by the students who are in the team. And I'm also getting analytics specifically to the people who are part of that team. So how do we do that? Well, we've got the create button here and I could create a new channel or a group or a live event. But what you actually wanna do is you wanna go to my content and go to groups here. Now, this is really interesting because when a team is created, it actually creates an Office 365 group on the back end, and that Office 365 group is available here inside of uh, Microsoft Stream. And you'll see here, look, I've got Eng 1300, I've got Eng 2400. I didn't make this. This already existed because the back end of Teams creates this group. So I've got a group and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go into channels and over here, I'm gonna go create a new channel. And this channel name is going to be something like lecture recordings, okay? And I'll make it X because I probably already have one of those. I'm gonna set a particular tile here um, to make a nice graphic for it and I'll put a description. And I might even use hashtags like ENGG, 2400 and now we can search across stream and we can grab those videos. So I made this new lecture recordings channel. Now if I go to my actual uh, lecture recordings channel in here, it's this one over here, you're going to notice it's got all of the videos from my live event. Did I put them in here? No, we are using Power Automate, formerly called Flow. And when the live event is finished, it automatically moves the video and it drops it here in the lectures. These lectures sit here. That's pinned as a channel in the Recordings tab in Teams. And so automatically the gallery is populated with a new video. And if I want, maybe we're here in Beam Deflection and I might want to pin the individual video. So I could go over here, I could add a stream tab and instead of putting a gallery in here, okay, so I've got channels here, what I might want to do is I might want to take that week eight video and perhaps I'll do share. I'm going to grab the URL for that video. I can drop this in here. Look, it's pulled it up, Monday week eight lecture. And I'm gonna call this recording eight. I'm not gonna post to the channel. I'll hit save. And now look at that. I've pinned specifically the lecture recording for week eight into the week eight channel. And I've got That's this awesome integrated experience. Mike, do you have any questions or weigh-ins here at this point, or should I just keep steaming along? Oh, I, oh, for I, me, it's just, I love I watching love how you see how all these things up. Beautiful. Yeah, and I, what I really want right. to show today is this This is just default out of the box, right? I'm not, there's, there's no fancy side-loaded apps or Azure resources groups or bots or anything. We're just using out-of-the-box Teams Classroom here. 
Yeah, no, exactly. I think a lot of people are just they're just just trying to get their head wrapped around the basics and that's why you know we don't we don't we'll have you back maybe in, in a month to go deeper into the box but this is great just for classroom structure in higher ed i think yeah exactly just really higher ed yeah and you know it's th there's so much about this which is just signposting and and making things really clear you know i could go here into my OneDrive. i'll go into my teaching file here I've got teaching resources, I've got graphics, and you'll see here, I, I just, I make these little graphics, like um, these are the tiles that I use for Teams, okay? They're, they're designed with UNSW branding, they use their colors, they're big enough that when I'm in my actual team, you can see at the left here, I've got Eng2400. I know this is UNSW. Now look at my slide here. I've got the same yellow. I've got the emblem of the university. If I click over to slides, it's week eight, beam deflection. I've got week eight slides as my tab name. The file is called Eng2400 week eight. There's my UNSW logo. There's my diagram in my UNSW colors. And that same signposting diagram was used in the header for the announcement for that week. And this brings me to my next thing that I wanna show everybody, super cool out of the box Teams feature that we have, which is my week eight to-do page. So I'm gonna open this one up and look, what do you see here? Well, what is this? This is a SharePoint page. So we'll go to settings here and you're going to notice that this is actually a SharePoint page and I've got a bunch of different pages. I've got a page for every single week and I've built these out of templates. I've got the header here. Now this header, again, we've got our nice colors. We've got all of that signposting. You're going to notice that even though it's wide, that it's got a really nice dynamic response because there's a focal point that's set on that diagram. It's not getting truncated off the screen as I change the shape. And I'm using a nice SharePoint template here that matches the colors of my university. So we've got branding, signposting. We've got lots of conformity and familiarity. And this is just helping the students get through as quickly and as easy as possible. And so this is where I'm going to say stuff like, OK, maybe start reading your textbook or attend the lecture. And what's this? This is a link to the live event. And I can open this, but I'm not going to because we're doing a live event right now. And that live event, of course, I'm going to put it over here on their calendar. All of my students have everything they need to do on the calendar. Maybe we're going to uh, revise the lectures. Now, what is this link here? This is a link to a tab that's going to take them to the, the slides tab within the team. So when they go through this week eight to do, you're going to notice that in that first post, I said everything for this week is in the to do tab, which I put a link to. Have a look at this copy link to tab. OK, now the, the link that I have just created is going to take them to the tab. So if I put a post, let's go here. I'm going to say. I wonder how many, I wonder how many people know that there's a copy link to tab. Can you show that one more time? That's a cool thing. Yeah. OK, let's do that one more time. OK, in fact, how about let's do a sandbox version of this. I recommend everyone makes a sandbox like this. OK, so we are in week one. Here is the to do page. This is just an empty one here. I'm going to click the three dots copy link to tab. Yeah, now, post, super, cool. super cool. Now I've made a brand new channel. So let's suppose we go dot, 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 add a channel. It's going to be week three. Topic X. I'll give a description about all of the topics of week three here. I'm going to automatically pin this for all of my students because I want it to be I don't want it to be hidden, so automatically show this channel. So now when I add this channel, we're building it, we've got a brand new channel. Now, if I didn't do that, it might be displayed here as a hidden channel. I want my students to show, to see that week three channel, and I'm able to set that by default. So I've got my new channel here. 
I'm the first post I'm going to do is going to be an announcement. I and I know the Microsoft design team. They're awesome. They do all of these rad announcements. Maybe it's for a class and I'm going to talk about the lab work that we're going to do that week. But because I'm big on UNSW branding, choose an illustration or I could instead upload an image. And if I upload an image, we can go back to these resources I've made. Look at this Teams announcement, right? I just make these little graphics and I drop those in instead. So then I'll say week uh, three, topic X, we're gonna talk about all of the cool stuff, but if I go back over to that to-do page, I copy the link to tab. Now I'm gonna go back to my announcement and I'm gonna say, uh, keep up to date by checking out the, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop my link, the week one to do tab. Boom. Now, maybe I might click on that and press the hyperlink. Maybe I want to just edit, you know, what the link actually says, which I can do here. Now, when I post this announcement, the students are going to see that they're going to click it and look it takes them straight to the to-do page love it i've never i've never actually seen that in the place so like this is the first time i've seen a link to tab in a message beautiful yep it's really slick it's really nice so we can jump back over here we're in one of our to-do pages let's go to the week one to-do page and I'm gonna show you here, this is actually a SharePoint page. So remember those live events I had, they're actually sitting right here inside, inside the actual to-do page, right? This video here is playing because it's a SharePoint asset. And remember that file that I pinned, look, this is the actual file here for the document. I don't have to upload or download this, by the way, because I can map that drive to my own hard disk. Check this out. Files. Here are all of the files. Let's say back in general files. We've got uh, the class materials here. Now I'm an educator. I want to work on all of these slides. I'm going to press sync, getting ready to sync here to OneDrive. And this is going to map this to my hard disk. So there's no more up load, download of files, you just change the file on your own computer. Okay, so we're in our cool to do page. How do we build this? Well, you see over here, if I click this, it says SharePoint. And here is my SharePoint. I've built it. I've got the navigation of all of the files here. You might go, oh, SharePoint, this sounds a little bit scary. I'm not so keen on this. Well, what I'm going to do here is let's suppose we're in a brand new blank team. We don't have any of these pages. I might click over here to pages in SharePoint. All right. And look here, I've got this button that says new, create a new. Do I want to create a new document? No, I want to create a new site page. Okay, so now I've got a blank SharePoint page and I'm going to write week three topic X, okay, here is that um, file that I've got here. So I've got an image that I can use. I've got all of my recent images that I've used. Maybe I wanna pick one of these out. I'm not actually gonna do that. I'll leave it as the default right now. And uh, maybe I wanna go in and I wanna change the style of it a little bit. Do I wanna do a color block? Check out the colors from the template. Maybe I want to put the publish date, some different stuff like this. Okay, really straightforward. So I've made this page here and I want to add some content. Okay, so let's say perhaps I want to put in some block text and I'm just going to write here, start reading your textbook. Okay, that's great. How about we do something like uh, Microsoft education blog all right we're going to grab a web page like this this is one of the best blogs in the world okay and i'm going to jump over here and perhaps we want to put uh, a link to a web page in here okay 
Here's the link. All right, I could do some fancy stuff with it, but we've just got a preview of that. Done, awesome. Let's drop in something else. Maybe wanna, we wanna drop in an image, a diagram, a code snippet. Look at all of the amazing stuff that's in here. How about a GitHub repo? Okay, so I might just drop over here and check out UNSW Qbot Git, uh, GitHub. Okay, there we go. This is my own bot called Question Bot here. Um, we could jump over here to the uh, demo page here where it shows you how Question Bot runs. All right, and we can go back over here. I'm not going to sign into GitHub, but I could drop in that repo right here and it would look really nice. Okay, so we've got all of these different kinds of box that we can add. We can even add stuff like Power Apps. I could add a Power BI dashboard, which I might want to do. I've got a whole bunch of different Power BI reports. You know, I know this is getting a little bit advanced, but how about we just jump over to Office 365. I'm going to hit Power BI. I want to show you something really interesting in Power BI. We've actually got these things called workspaces, and there's a workspace specifically and automatically created by the classroom team that we may have created. And when I do this in Power BI, I'm able to go, let's say workspaces. Here's the sandbox that we created. There's no dashboards in here, but I'll go to one of my other classes like Eng 1300, and I've got a dashboard. All right, and I might just grab one of these links, for example, and in SharePoint, I'm going to add a report and I could drop in the report here. Uh, oh, I accidentally got the dashboard instead of the report. All right, so there's all of this cool stuff that we can add into our, our little SharePoint page that we've been making. And when we're done, what we're going to do is say, let's publish this page. And as I publish this page, I'm going to go add page to navigation. OK, and I'm going to post it as news on the site. And maybe I'm going to save this page as a template because I'm going to do one for every single week. And I can copy the address of this page as well. So on the left here, you now see that I've got week three topic X on the navigation. I can reorder that, of course, and I can go back over here to my team. Let's go to my sandbox team. It's week three topic X, and I'm going to add a not a SharePoint document library, but I'm going to add a SharePoint page. Now, these are all of the different SharePoint pages that are here, but the one that I just built was actually inside this team. So let's say I go over here, add a SharePoint page, and what you're going to notice is there is week three topic X. I didn't even need that link to it. Save and now, boom, there is my SharePoint page. And doesn't it look beautiful? Laid out any content I want, all sorts of stuff that I can enter in here. And I've got this great way for my students to navigate the different topics. I don't know, Mike, are you seeing many educators using SharePoint pages in their classroom teams? I have, I but I'll have, not to the, the level that you are. are. You're, uh, uh, you're at another you're level. At another level. Yeah, well, you know, and it's just cool out of the box stuff and, and a lot of educators aren't used to all of these um, tools that they've got, uh, which are really just core parts of Office that are integrated into the experience. So David, just so David, as we're David, wrapping up, wrap up here, are there, are there any, any tips? tips? Just think, think about the think maybe about the higher, higher, higher ed folks. Just getting started. What do, you, what do you recommend for them to get into teams and get like maybe not to your level, but your first couple of tips of tips of things started? Okay, so my, my tips for getting started really actually what I've shown off today specifically were a bunch of my absolute favorite tools. Okay, so my tips are teams use your channels correctly, break it up into topic, use that class notebook, 
put your ink, use that authentic version of notes that you're doing, broadcast beautiful lectures or lessons as live events, put the links for OneNote inside your PowerPoint, use the file storage in Teams to bring that back up, utilize stream galleries and utilize SharePoint pages. This is, you know, uh, that was a really quick demo I gave, but you know what? I just clicked around to figure out how to use that stuff. Nobody ever taught me how to use it. I was never Googling web pages, how to do this, how to do that. You know, all I really do is I just click around and figure it out. And those core functionalities, Stream, OneNote, Teams, SharePoint are so powerful and they're totally out of the box experiences. Obviously, there's a heap more cool stuff. I don't need to go in and show you things like assignments tools. I'm sure other people are showing how to use this stuff. But I really do just want to highlight the structure is really helpful. helpful. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and giving that structure, giving the, the consistency of organization for the students, uh, laying everything out in a really intuitive fashion is just going to help them navigate around. And you know what? I don't get any questions from students saying, hey, does anybody know where this is or does anybody know how to find that? Because everything is just laid out and organized in a really simple and meaningful way. No, that's great. That's great. Well, David, okay. thank you so much for joining us today. This is an incredible webinar that you've been showing. And we also will be posting this on YouTube. So the people who missed it or want to watch it two or three times, it's going to be right there for posterity, which should be great. So what we're going to do now, uh, just any parting words, we're going to switch back and just wrap it up. But any last words? Oh, looks like you're on mute. Control shift M, I learned, is the shortcut key from Maryland. Somebody muted me. <laughs> um, well, what I'd say is great to show off these core functionalities. I'd be happy to get on on another webinar or two. Honestly, Mike, I think you and I, we could do 10 of these if we wanted and we wouldn't <laughs> run out of things to talk about. But it's just those core features. If you if you can wrap your head around those core features, if you can utilize that, get a really good structure for your course, uh, your students are going to benefit from it immensely. Yeah. yeah. I agree, and we will definitely have you back. So maybe like in late April, early May, we will have a, a more advanced version of the types of things you've been talking about. So thank you very much, David, and thank you for joining us on a day later Friday morning where you are. And I'm going to share my screen back and we're just going to wrap this up. So thanks a lot for joining us. All right, my pleasure. I'm going to be listening to the wrap up. Great. So in terms of just to recap our resources, we've got our Microsoft EDU remote learning site. There's our ever popular Teams education quick start guide, which is in lots of languages now. And we encourage people to sign up for our remote learning community. And then the show notes we posted just a little bit later tonight, and we should have this video up on our YouTube playlist tomorrow morning. The playlist link is here. We've got 10 other webinars you can watch. So we are actually building a good set of topics to help people out. And always remember, you can file a support ticket right here. If you're an educator that needs support, we are here to help. And the next couple of webinars, we have a special Friday webinar edition. Normally we haven't done them on Friday, but tomorrow we've got Ian Mikitel from the Whiteboard team and Davey uh, Temmerman, who's an educator using Whiteboard. They're gonna be talking all about Whiteboard and Teams and then on Monday, we've got a whole group of folks from West Ada in Idaho about how they've deployed teams across their district and trained and done. They're one of the leading, uh, I would say, deployment and scale and training and usage of teams across the country. And then on when, or uh, Tuesday, April 7th, our first ever partner corner. That's a new segment, I guess we'd call it, where we're going to have Tejas from Wakelet and the CEO of Buncee, uh, Marie Arturi, to talk about their apps for remote learning. And our whole schedule is below. We're actually adding more and more. So we're actually booking out through most of April now. And we hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot for Maryland for producing as well as Bryce and Matt.